So this is Nick Swartzen on Fear of Worlds podcast. Again, a clip taken from the Fight and the Kids subreddit as per usual. Let's see in this first clip what he has to say. She was just sitting there like fucking Brian <laughs> Callen. You know what I mean? Just <laughs> waiting to get drilled by fucking shop. Just sitting there. <laughs> Fucking shot, thief or Sutherland? Yeah, God, God, that's what I call him. Dang, bro. no, I'm kidding. I, there was a bit about Shab, like I guess he said. People say he stole some fajita joke from me. Did he? I don't. No, I don't care. It was just. Oh, it was so pussy, man. They just say they say it, and then they have to retract it. But I get, again, I get it because day to day they live there. They have to interact with these people. You can't always be, you know, what's that word called? You can't always be. Um, confrontational or cause problems and shit because you have to see these people every day but the fact that they always say a little bit of stuff and then kind of retract and say I don't care he's a great guy I love him it's just so fake and so fucking awful I mean I'd much rather if someone say they don't like me or like me than this kind of wishy-washy middle shit because why would you bring it up if you didn't think it, if it's true like why would you even mention it you mentioned it without any encouragement and just said no I don't think it's true though funny I, I know brennan i don't care if he did but i didn't doubt it. i mean he's had fajitas yeah a lot of people have had fajitas yeah <laughs> but i haven't seen i don't know if i've even seen i i haven't seen that joke it doesn't come to mind no i mean who fucking cares <sighs> she was just who fucking cares but you brought it up honestly these comedians are fucking awful but this joke about brian can in the beginning spreading his legs open wide for brennan's hilarious especially when you think of the context that we're in now where essentially brian's career has been somewhat propped up and helped by Brendan, right? Especially post rape allegations. He basically had to bend over backwards and bend over for Brendan in order to kind of make sure he's able to make his payments or whatever alimony he has put together at the time, or just to keep the lights on because clearly the Hollywood stuff is clearly over. And I think in general, you know, clearly the rape is the worst thing in this situation and the victim. So, you know, thoughts and feelings go out to the victim to accuse Brian of what they accused him of. But in terms of his career, that rape allegation has been the single worst thing to happen to his career and the show. I think already the dynamic between Brandon and Brian was also always going bad anyway. It was always kind of swaying towards Brandon being the Beyonce of the group and the star of the show and kind of feeling himself and thinking like he cheated. No, no, he kind of completed the game and showing up all these comics like, look, I've came into the game. I'm only three, two years in. I've got a special. I'm touring the world. You guys are lazy. I'm showing you guys to do it. I'm setting a new trend. So he clearly he was feeling himself way too much to the point where the show became unwatchable. But ever since that rape allegation thing happened, the show has been unwatchable. Honestly, some of the clips are even hard to get through. It's ridiculously hard because Brian is essentially Brendan's cuck. Like, he has no real opinion, no real backbone. Um, you know, he doesn't really stand up or correct Brendan in any kind of way whatsoever because that man is his daddy. Like, that man is his absolute daddy. And it's really awful to watch because Brendan's a man... I mean, Brian's approaching, what, 60 years of age? He's basically nearly double Brian Brendan's age. But he's essentially turned into his subordinate, which is awful. Because I feel like the Fire and the Kid was the best when they were equal partners in it. It felt like even though Brian, Brendan was maybe doing most of the podcast work, they still approached the show as in like they were both creative partners in some way, shape or form. But now it's definitely Brendan's show and Brian's the guest as opposed to they're both own and co-host the show. Which is unfortunate if you're a fan of the show because I honestly think it's unwatchable now. It really is awful beyond 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 awfully bad but hey what can you do you know sometimes the easiest thing to do is just not to rape people and then maybe you, you will be able to have a successful career and not have to rely on the charity of um somebody like a brendan in it but let's um upload this one this is another one that we're talking about giving um nick schwartz an apron because it's an, if it's like another reference again to the final kids i've read it a very a very not so subtle reference to the final kids i've read it i love pf changs when you're on the road is there like a go-to restaurant when you're touring? <laughs> For me, Chang's. if I can find a P.F. Chang's, I'm not sponsored by <laughs> Look at that look. <laughs> Nick Swartzen's the best. Them yet. Swartzen, so let's sorry. change that P.F. <laughs> yeah. So, so, I mean, you know, is oh, there, do, like... You like, do you fuck with Cheesecake Factory? Yeah, fuck that. I mean, you know, it seems cool. What would you have been, you think? Carpenter <clears throat> or something? Like a... Ooh. I would have gone to car carpentry college. I would have gone to Harvard and majored in carpentry <laughs> with a minor in um, PF Chang's. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's, that's... 
Yo, the troll aside, right, for my American watches, the troll aside, is P.F. Chang's actually that tasty? I don't think, what do we have here that's equivalent to a P.F. Chang's? We have Wagamama's, right? But that's Japanese, isn't it? Wagamama's is a Japanese, um, uh, what you call it, uh, mass market Japanese fast food, whatever it may be called. And I guess P.F. Chang's is mostly Chinese. Is it Chinese or is it Korean? I don't know which one it is. But is it actually that good? Because Brendan always talks about the orange chicken and shit. And people always mention it, like they go out together with families and stuff there. Is it really good? Like, is it is it like good enough to like, people are saying here, it's not terrible, but overpriced for average Chinese food. Cantu saying yes. Um, Zach's don't enjoy Asian dishes personally, said so Zach. Zach, do you not enjoy Asian dishes, Zach? Or do you not enjoy Asian people? Zach Huff in the chat, let us know. Do you not like Asian people or do you not like their food? <laughs> <laughs> Jack Minus is not awful. AST says not really. Teju says PF Chang is horrible and it smells like crap in here. TJ says overpriced. AST says frozen dinners are better than actual PF. What? Frozen dinners are better than the PF Changs. Okay, maybe it's that bad. Um, it's awful. Jack Minus says it's awful. It's total mid. David Canto says ha ha ha. Let's see what Zach Huff is saying. Shit them Asian girls pussies. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Look, you're not going to get me demonetized, mate, Zach. You can keep your thoughts and your horny thoughts to yourself, my friend. I'm not fucking reading that out. No way, Jose. No way. Um, Colin says, the chain restaurant garbage. You might as well get the real deal. Uh, Martin Moose says, I like lettuce wraps. Ryu says, P.F. Chang's and Panda sucks, but real Asian food is good. Okay, cool. So it's 50-50. Some people are saying it's really good. Some people are saying it's um it's okay. Um, So, okay, no problem. I see, I see. I got laid after going P.F. Chang's with David Cantu. Who do who, who fucking who who has sex with you after eating fucking P.F. Chang's? What what's her name? Um, who's the girl on fucking um? Who's the girl on Bad Friends? What's what's that Asian girl's name? Um, Kalala's um cousin. That girl, but she seems like she's missing a few little light bulbs in it. Maybe she was she would be she would think P.F. Chang's was like a Michelin star restaurant or something. Is that mean to say that she's missing a few light bulbs? That she comes across a little bit, you know. Or is that, no, I don't know. It maybe is a mean, I don't know, I don't know. You know what I mean, though. I'm only, I'm only joking. Ha, ha, ha. I'm a comedian. Ha, ha, ha. Rudy Jules. Yeah, that's the one. Rudy. Rudy, 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 Rudy. Anyway, let's move on from that one. I don't want to be caught in some sort of situation. And this is an example of the joke, the fajita joke that Brendan may have taken from Nick Schwartzen. You guys have to make your own opinion as to what you think. So what do you guys think? Do you think... Do you think, do you think, really? Uche is saying it's a stick. She's a straight A student. So she pretends to have like downs or she pretends to be like, um, what's that word called? Not downs. Um, she pretends to be autistic or something. Is that her thing? Honestly, comedy people are awful, aren't it? you got Burt Kreischer fucking LARPing as an alcoholic, even though he's a multimillionaire, has an organization, has a tour that he does, puts on shows, Netflix specials, produces his own TV things in movies. He pretends he's an alcoholic. And then you've got fucking Jules who's pretending to be autistic and somewhat redacted and on the spectrum, but yet she's a straight A student. Actually, to be honest, I'll take it back. Aren't most people who are like a little bit, you know, on the spectrum really smart anyway? Right, they usually have are usually incredibly um, intellectual when it comes to you know sitting down and revising and acing exams. Maybe I'm in the wrong. There. I don't really know. But anyway, I'm gonna re I'm gonna reverse do 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 and get the hell out of that one. Let's talk about this. So this is the clip that maybe illustrates if Brendan may have stole the fajita joke um, from uh, Brendan may have stole the fajita joke from Nick. I'd love to hear you guys' impression, what you guys think. Do you think Brendan stole this joke from Nick? Or do you think this is just a common observation from the fajitas? Because I've seen it before. We don't have many Mexican restaurants here in London, but we do have some. And I know the whole like shebang of like having, you know, the thing with the sparkles and shit, making an event when you got wood at the table. So what do you guys think? Do you think this is a general observation or do you think it's a straight rip of Nick? <laughs> Pardon. Wow. She, was, she was just sitting there like fucking Brian <laughs> Callen. You know what I mean? Just waiting to get drilled by fucking shop. Just sitting there. Fucking shop. Thief or Sutherland. Yeah, God, that's what I call him. Dang, bro. No, I'm kidding. I, there was a bit about shop. Like, I guess he said, people say he stole some fajita joke from me. Did he? I don't, no, I don't care. Do you like fajitas? Can we get those? Yeah, you do, right? They're good. It's more than a meal. It's very exciting. And you order a fajita, you order them. And then a couple minutes later, we bring them out, and it is loud. I want that same feeling. 
You know the difference of why Nick Schwartz's version of it is really good? It's because of his tone. And again, this is the thing about comedy. This, this is the kind of nuance probably and why the, probably the people like Brendan will never really be funny funny. It's that nuance of like him whispering, you like fajitas? You like fajitas? Are you a fan of fajitas? Wow. It's that kind of whispering tone and he kind of builds up to the crescendo of the sparkles and shit. Whereas he's just shouting into the mic, fajitas, fajitas. I mean, that redacted voice of his, it doesn't even come across the same way. I go to Chili's and order fajitas. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, I order those fajitas, it's like a pop -head. Smoke, it's like 4th of July. Everyone's like, oh my God. What See? is that? What the fuck is that? I, those fajitas hit the floor, it's all. Yeah. And like, what the fuck, I'm all. Right here, right here, right here. Right here. Turns into an arts and crafts project. <laughs> Another level of excitement. <laughs> tortillas, you have all these little sour cream, guac. We need to rain with tortillas now and shit. <laughs> this is funny. I, I know Brendan, I don't care if he did, but I doubt it. I mean, he's had fajitas. Yeah, I have a lot. Come on, Nick, man. If you got C clamps, mate, if Brendan fucking physically assaulted you in some comedy club, allegedly. You have to have more balls in this to stand up to the guy, man. You can't be having someone physically assault you and then you're running onto a podcast and insult them because, you know, they basically won because they physically assaulted you and you did nothing. And then when it comes up to ripping them, you then try and backtrack. Say, no, he's my friend. I don't, you know. Come on. Have some fucking balls, mate. Come on. So what? You can kill you with his bare hands. Just keep on going. I mean, rip the guy. It doesn't really matter. But who, what do you guys think? Do you think he stole it? Um, people are saying, God, I love Nick Swanson, stolen joke for sure. Nick was the only comedian that tells jokes Brendan can, can understand. <laughs> Nick tells the shows. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's true, because if you're going to steal jokes, you have to steal jokes from people who you kind of similar like, like you're kind of, there's some similarities in your personality or in your interests. You can't go too heady with some comedians because it wouldn't make any sense with the content that you put out and how you present yourself. So, yeah. <laughs> um, Koyla says, I think he's so redacted, he just repeats things and is too self-centered to consider it stealing. True. I definitely agree with that one. Yes, Marty Moose. Um, people are saying in the subreddit that, that, that there, was a sh there was a story that Brendan shared one time on a podcast ages ago where he spoke about how some people can get too comfortable in their in their kind of uh, piss taking and stuff outside the comedy club because I guess that's the standard thing they do outside the comedy club. They stand around their cars in the car park and talk about how much they cheat on their wives and how much money they make from podcasts and how much dumb fans spend on their shitty merch and shit, right? And during that time, I guess they can also get into sessions where they kind of rip each other and do a bit of roasting. And I guess during that session, Brendan didn't like what he heard from an unnamed comedian and had to see clamp the guy and pull him to a corner and basically give him a stern telling off and tell him, hey, you can't joke with me. No jokes with me. I'm the thinnest skinned comedian in the world. No jokes will be tolerated. And I guess he kind of, you know, set the record straight and felt really proud of himself that he had to physically assault a fucking dweeby comedian, him being a UFC guy and built like a brick shit house. It's like, come on, man. But hey, what, what do I know? What do I know?